So I want to now discuss an example of an integral domain that is not a unique factorization domain. This is a very important example to point out because to really appreciate what a unique factorization is, we have to figure out what a unique factorization isn't, or I should say, we have to figure out who's not a unique factorization domain. Now, to be a unique factorization domain, you have to be an integral domain, uh, of course. So if we just come up with any ring that's not an integral domain, then it's not a UFD. So in particular, we should be interested in an integral domain that's not a UFD. So we have, an, so we have cancellation, we have zero product property, but we don't have unique factorization. And so I want us to consider the ring where we adjoin to the integers the square root of three times i, or you might think of it as we've adjoined the square root of negative three to the integers, okay? Be aware that the Gaussian integers, we adjoined the square root of negative one, but if we, we get a UFD in that situation, but if you adjoin the square root of negative three, you don't get a unique factorization. And let me show you why that is. So of course, this ring, uh, a typical element of that ring is going to look like a plus b times the square root of negative 3, where a and b are arbitrary integers. So we can make a lot of arguments using the norm again, where if you have some element z inside of our ring right here, then same thing as before, the norm of z is going to equal the complex modulus of z squared. But in this situation, if my norm, if my, excuse me, if my, if my integer... I'm using the word integer loosely here. I don't mean a rational integer in this situation, but if my integer has the form a plus b times the square root of negative three, then what we're gonna see is the following. The complex modulus here means you're gonna take the number, times it by its complex conjugate, a minus b times the square root of negative three. When we FOIL this out, we're gonna get an a squared, what else are we going to get? We're going to get a negative a b square root of negative 3. We're going to get a positive a b times the square root of negative 3. Clearly, those two numbers, if I pause for a moment, are going to cancel each other out. That's the whole point of using the complex conjugate. And then finally, you're going to get positive 3 times b squared. So summarizing this, you have an a squared plus 3b squared. When you take the norm of an integer in this domain, it always looks like a squared plus 3b squared. That's different than with the Gaussian integers. They always get a squared plus b squared. Things are a little bit different now, okay? Um, so a similar argument now applies that the, the, um, the units of this ring are going to have a complex modulus, which is equal to, uh, excuse me, they're going to have a norm, which is related to the complex modulus. It's going to have a norm that's equal to one. So how do you make this thing equal to one? Well, you can stick in plus or minus one in for A and then zero in for B, that'll give you one. Um, but you could also try, like if you tried to put in a zero for A, you're gonna have three times B squared where B squared is an integer. That doesn't ever equal one. So this ring has only two, uh, has only two units, exactly plus or minus one, okay? So then consider the numbers two, one minus root negative three and one plus root negative three. I'm going to make the claim that these numbers are irreducibles, that they cannot be factored more than they already are. Um, and so let's prove that argument here. Let's first show that 2 is an irreducible over this domain. I'm going to be very careful here to use the word irreducible as opposed to a prime. We know that every prime number in a domain is an irreducible number, but the reverse direction is not actually true. And this example will provide an example of such a thing. Um, so let's first show that 2 is irreducible. Consider a factorization of 2, okay? So when we take the norm of 2, we end up with 4, 2 squared. And so if it has a factorization, that factorization will break up across the norm. And so we have we have v, excuse me, the norm of u and the norm of v is equal to 4. Now, if, the, if this is a trivial factorization, one of the numbers u or v is is a unit and its norm will be one, and then the other norm will be four, it's a, it would be an associate. Um, so if we want this to be a proper factorization and a non-trivial factorization, then the only way you can factor four would be so that this is two and this is two. So we make that statement here. So how can you solve the equation a squared plus three b squared equals two? And the answer is you can't do it because if you choose any anything other than zero for b, like even if you take one, you're gonna end up with three, which three is, you have at least three, a number that's bigger than three, but three is already too big for two. So you have to have B equal to zero 
But then that would imply that A itself is equal to the square root of 2, which is not an integer. It's not even a rational number. Um, so there is no solution. There's no integer solution to the equation A squared plus 3B squared equals 2. We get a contradiction. So this shows us that 2 is, e is an irreducible inside this ring. Now, just to talk a little bit more about number theory here, this is an example of a Diophantine equation. We have an equation for which we only want to accept integer or maybe only rational solutions to it. That's a pretty big topic in number theory. And so you can see why, as we're delving into these topics of commutative algebra and algebraic number theory, that those elementary number theory questions are very relevant here. The Diophantine solutions to this equation or I should say the lack of them, is evidence that 2 is an irrational integer inside of, excuse me, an irreducible integer inside of this domain. Uh, we can do the same game if you take the numbers 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 because it's very easy to show that their norm will also equal 4. And therefore, that gives us by the same argument that they have to be reducible because there's no way you could factor these numbers in such a way that one of the factors isn't a unit. All right. Well, why does this matter? Well, if you take the number four, which four itself belongs to this domain, z adjoin the square root of negative three, right? I can give you two different factorizations of four. One is two times two, and one of them is one plus the square root of negative three times one minus the square root of negative three. This is a product of irreducibles because two is irreducible. This is also a product of irreducibles. We showed earlier that these numbers are irreducible. So we have two different uh, factorizations, which uh, the two different prime factorizations here, right? Are they equivalent? You know, is it, are these two different ones in fact, right? Well, if two is an associate of this, uh, then it turns out this is not really a different factorization, at least not with regard to how we define unique factorization. My claim, of course, is that these are not associates of each other. Therefore, these are two different factorizations. So let's provide the details of this. Why do we have two different factorizations of four? Well, we have, of course, that two divides four. So you have this factorization, okay? Um, does two divide this? Okay, well, if these were associates, then this number would have to be 2 times 1, which is 2, which is not, um, or it'd have to be negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2, which it's not. Remember, there's only two units in this ring, plus or minus 1. So the only associates of 2 are 2 and negative 2. These are not associates. Um, these are not associates. So this gives us two different factorizations. And so since we have two different factorizations of the number four, and these are factorizations using irreducible numbers, then we have to conclude that we don't have unique factorization. So z adjoined the square root of negative three is an example of, a, of an integral domain that doesn't have unique factorization.